What's good, all my basketball fans out there? I'm your boy NJW, and I'm with Stutterpot TV. Today, we're going to end the discussion about who's the greatest of them all on that basketball court. Let's check out every NBA legend that calls my man Black Jesus. Point blank. I never seen nobody play like he plays. And, uh, I mean, you can, you can include all of them. That wasn't Michael Jordan out there. It was God disguised as Michael Jordan. It's just God disguised as Michael Jordan. Jordan. This phrase, which captures the essence of Michael Jordan's career, has always resonated with me when discussing the legend around him. Granted that no one is a god, you have to acknowledge how much Jordan altered the landscape of basketball. He was performing something on the basketball court that had never been seen before. The admiration and love Bird and many others felt for Michael Jordan's basketball skills was mirrored in the statement which became renowned. It's evidence of Jordan's influence on the game and his ability for nearly superhuman performances. And that got me thinking about which other NBA legends referred to Michael Jordan as a basketball god, or which stories depicted him as a supernatural figure. So I will present 10 NBA legends who have told unreal stories and portrayed Michael Jordan as a god. We will start with Shaquille O'Neal, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, who has expressed genuine appreciation and regard for Michael Jordan. So this is a list of all the top 10 legends that have confessed that Michael Jordan was a god. Now this is a top 10, let's say that again, list of NBA legends, not just people, normal people. These are legends that are saying this about Michael Jordan on numerous occasions. Shaq acknowledges Jordan's impact on the game and recognizes him as a basketball icon. He often highlights Jordan's influence on his own career and the league as a whole. His respect for Jordan goes beyond their on-court rivalry. And when he was in an interview with Patrick Bet David, he showed his ultimate appreciation by saying this about Michael Jordan. Was there anybody that you kind of avoided talking smack to because if you did, yeah. your spirit got bigger and they wanted to beat you or? Michael Jordan, you don't want to mess with God. <laughs> you gotta stay away from Mike. Leave that man alone. <laughs> LeBron James holds Michael Jordan in high regard as a basketball idol, and he has often stated that he grew up watching Jordan. Okay, so now we're on number nine. And the debate is LeBron is better than Jordan. Now, if this man is gonna say that Jordan is a god, there's no higher praise. So quick, the comparison shouldn't be compared and imitating his play style. He respects Jordan's contribution to the game as both a player and a cultural figure. Despite the inevitable comparisons, LeBron has never stopped expressing his respect for Jordan and the lasting impact he left on the game. You will see how he maintains the same love from 24 years old to 33. Michael Jordan was kind of like that God. He was that 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 angel sent from heaven that, that I kind of used him to help me get through some of the darkest days that I had. Even at, people say, well, you're only nine years old, but you know, there's a lot of dark days, you know, when you grow up the way I grew up and, and, and you're part of a single parent household. So, you know, every other day, if I got an opportunity on WGN to watch Mike, it gave me another boost of life. You know, it made me feel that I can make it out of this situation. But Ooh, look at the hairdo on that character. When I met Michael Jordan for the first time, I literally couldn't believe it was him. I couldn't believe it. Like people, you know, I felt the dude looked like Jesus Christ to me. <laughs> he looked like black, Je he looked, you know, he was black Jesus to me. Nobody could tell me anything different. I think it was my junior year of high school. I go up to Chicago and I go to a gym called Hoops where he, he plays basketball in the summertime. And before they play, they say Mike always, you know, used to lift before they play. Uh, and I didn't know he was going to be there. Uh, we walk up there, and the first person I see is Charles Oakley. You know, Oak being from Cleveland, dapped him up. I had seen Oak around the city a few times, you know. And Oak move, and when he moves, Mike is sitting on the bench press. But I seen him, I seen him walking towards me, and it was kind of like he was walking on air. He, I, I was, I had to, I had to pinch myself. Was, was, is that Mike? Michael. I didn't think he was real, man. You don't understand. I didn't think Michael Jordan was real. I only thought he lived in the TV, either in games or commercials 
or come fly with me on cassette tapes. Wow, yeah. I didn't think he was real. And when I saw it. Okay, so now he could have been number one on this list of people that didn't th that think Michael Jordan was a god. Then, he, then he'd have been high ranking up there. But so that discussion is over from this day on. Can't nobody have that discussion with me. Is, is it Michael or is it LeBron? I'll put Kobe before I put LeBron. I'm just saying. That's just my opinion. Don't hate me for my opinion. So let's continue with the list. For him, I was like, if, if the man above would have took me that day, I would have lived a hell of a life, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him like that. Next, we got Tracy McGrady, a basketball legend in his own right, holds a deep respect for Michael Jordan. McGrady has spoken highly of Jordan's influence on his career and the game of basketball as a whole. Here's this interesting clip of McGrady talking about how meeting Michael Jordan when he was only 17 years old had a huge effect on him. The story goes on to show the lasting mark Jordan made, making a memorable moment in McGrady's basketball career. How was it like playing against MJ your rookie year? Shaking in my boots. <laughs> first time, shaking it, shaking, shaking it. The first time I had the guard, I'm like, yo, this, I'm, man. First of all, let me go back. 1997, MJ them in the playoffs. I think they they played against the Hawks, right? I'm at the game, playoff game, bro. I got an opportunity to go uh, in the back by the locker room after the game. So I'm standing back there. I'm 17 years old, kid. I, I've never been around NBA players like this, or even, you know, I've never been around somebody like MJ. So I'm standing back there, kid, and Pip Black comes Jesus. out. Pip comes out. All these players start coming out. Mike comes around that corner. Bruh, I ain't gonna lie to you. The man had a glow, bro. I swear, <laughs> Mike, Mike, dog, that shit is real. <laughs> <laughs> shit is real. Hey, hey, K, hey, KG said the same thing. You just feel his energy. Um, He'll say hey, shit. You feel that energy. I'm not. I'm not joking, it's bro. Black it's Jesus, real, man. I'm telling bro, you. Mike. Now, and that's Tracy McGrady, who was a, who was a Hall of Famer to me, that really played real good. So he's giving Jordan God praises. These are legends, man. These are legends saying this about one man that he's a God on the basketball court. And you can't compare nobody else to him. I came out, I was like, damn, bro. I ain't know what to say, <laughs> man. I was like, that's MJ, dog. That's MJ. In an interesting conversation, basketball legends Gary Payton and Kevin Garnett were in the same room and talked about what makes Michael Jordan different from Kobe Bryant and LeBron James. As they talked about Jordan, both Payton and Garnett, who are regarded as legends, Y'all got a part in my internet. I don't know what the problem is. Who made opponents afraid during their long careers changed the mood. The very mention of Jordan creates a unique atmosphere that emphasizes the unmatched influence and aura that surrounds this legend. <laughs> I would, took Jordan. You took Jordan? I'm never going against Jordan, dog. I've never seen it. I thought Michael Jordan was Jesus Christ. Like playing to be Michael Jordan. I swear to God, we called him Black Jesus for a reason. I played against him a long time, and he just did it. You know, he he just had he had all that. He just had the mentality to win. And if it gets close, he gonna take the shot. The basketball world is well aware of Allen Iverson's. That was number six. Number six had two players calling this man a god, a Jesus on the basketball court. So the discussion, I don't want to hear it anymore. These young fellas listen to the players that play. It's deep respect for Michael Jordan. But for those who haven't seen it yet, this video does a magnificent job of capturing the incredible effect Jordan had on Iverson when he first met in person. It captures the incredible experience of Iverson meeting Jordan face to face and provides a personal look at the deep respect and admiration that the legendary player inspired okay. in one of the greatest players of all time. Check it out. I, w I walked out on the court and I, I looked at him and for the first time in my life, a human being didn't look real to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if y'all watch the Chappelle show, but he, he, he talk about a certain incident where he seen somebody seeing Rick James. And 
Like, I literally seen his aura. Like, like he, it looked like he was, it looked like he was glowing. And I'm, and I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm saying to myself, like, man, that's Mike. Reggie Miller, who, who's a known trash talker in the NBA, had a welcome to. That was Alan Irvis. One of the only person, people to ever cross my boy over. And he's given such a high praise that the man had an aura about it. It's Michael Jordan, bitch. <laughs> to the league moment with Michael Jordan in his rookie year. This was a humbling experience with Reggie Miller, and it made sure that he will never talk trash to Michael Jordan. Rookie year, uh -huh. we were playing the Chicago Bulls, and this is Michael Jordan's third or fourth year in. Okay. And we were playing the next exhibition game in some obscure place. And most veterans do not like to play in exhibition games. They want to get to the real thing. I'm a wide-eyed, energetic rookie, and we're playing this exhibition game, and Michael's going through the motion. And Chuck Person, who's on my team, who's a trash talker as well, is like, can you believe Michael Jordan, the guy everyone's talking about, who's supposed to be able to walk on water? You're out here killing him, Reg. This is in the first half. <laughs> He's like, you should be talking to him. He's like, you know, you're right. Michael, who do you think you are? <laughs> the great Michael Jordan? That's right. There's a new kid on town, right? Kind of looks at me and starts shaking his head. So at half, I have 10, and he has four points, right? And I'm doing all this talking. He's like, OK. End of, the, end of the game in the second half, he ended up with 44, <laughs> and I ended up with 12. <laughs> so he outscored me 40 to 2. And as he's walking off, he's like, be sure and be careful, you never talk to black Jesus like that. <laughs> OK, I'm, I'm, so so I'm so sorry, black Jesus. I'm so sorry. This man is so confident in his ability. No, no, he's not the, they're not the only ones calling him Black Jesus. This man is calling himself Black Jesus. Then that's confident. One thing we do know, he walked this earth. Did you ever do it again? Never to Michael Jordan. <laughs> Never to Michael. Okay, there is one legend who refused to call him Black Jesus and wanted all the smoke no matter what and that was Kobe Bryant. Kobe had super high respect for Michael Jordan and knew that Jordan had the blueprint for the game he He might not have called him uh, Black Jesus, but he played like Black Jesus. Just say that. He might not have called him that. He took every his move. Michael said all the time. Kobe took all my moves. <laughs> wanted to emulate. They had a mentor and mentee relationship that was my favorite in all of sports. In these clips, you will see the amount of inspiration Jordan brought to Kobe. You know, so like, when, <laughs> I tell you, like when we, when I was in high school, um, and uh, I used to work out with the 76ers, I used to ask them, you know, what's it like to guard Mike? You know, Mike? You mean Black Jesus? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> black who? Oh, we call him Black Jesus, or you can call him Black Cat. I'm like, I'm gonna call him fucking Mike. That's his fucking name. <laughs> so the level of fear that he inspired in others was insane. Wow. And I would tell him, I said, when I face him, we're gonna go at it. He says, oh, you don't wanna do that. I'm like, what? Man, you don't know me, man. And so when we matched up, I think he understood that. And, you know, when I was 18, my first year, he got the best of me a bunch of times. I was right there the next play. You're not intimidating me. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And I think he saw that level of respect because I think he was the same way at 18 years old. And that common bond is, is what I think, uh, you know, where our connection was built. Step out there. That's right. <clears throat> That's right, Kobe Bryant. You know, you, you might not have called him that, but you showed by uh, imitating him, you let him know that you had the highest respect for him. R.I.P. to Black Mama. We miss you, boy. They're on the court we're taking heads off. It's not, it's not, there's no, I don't want to hear it. Like, I don't want to hear Michael's the best player in the world. I want to hear they call him Black Jesus. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you have to show me. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> That's yeah. that. <laughs> All right. Now let's go back to what Larry Bird meant by his famous quote. In 1986, Michael Jordan scored an amazing. Now this is one of the greatest white players to ever grace the basketball court. He's saying that wasn't Michael Jordan playing that day. That was Jesus. He's saying this. The highest regardless white man ever played basketball. Larry Bird.
using 63 points against the Boston Celtics, considered by most to be one of the greatest teams in NBA history. Even though the Celtics had great defense, Jordan came into their home court like a one-man army. His amazing play still holds the record for most points scored in a playoff game, showing how skilled and determined he was. Jordan reached a level of greatness during that game that left fans in awe. It was an important moment in the story of his known career. That wasn't Michael Jordan out there. It was God disguised as Michael Jordan. Rephrase that. I don't mean to cut you off. God in the basketball uniform. After the game, Larry Bird would say, I didn't think anyone was capable of doing what Michael has done to us. Nobody like him. <laughs> Point blank. I never seen nobody play like he plays. And uh, I mean, you, can, you can include all of them. It's hard to believe a guy score that many. Bird said you could include all of them. That means everybody that ever graced the basketball court. Laced them up. Anybody. He said you can include them all. Even him. Baskets and, uh, uh, and they lose, but uh, I know we started Dennis Johnson out on him, and then we went with uh, Danny Ainge, myself, uh, which it was really easy then when I started guarding him. Uh, then Bill Walton, and we was trying to run him to help all the time, but he had his outside shot going so well that he really didn't need to penetrate that much. Shot, got it! 63 for Jordan! And before I show the last legend, here is Zion Williamson who shared his story about the first time he met Michael Jordan. You get to see a player who never played against Jordan and never got the chance to watch him play live in his prime years talk about a presence he never felt before. And then after that, I have a very interesting clip of Michael Jordan's former coach, Doug Collins, sharing how the fans were when Michael Jordan was just in their vicinity. When I met him for the very first time, uh -huh. uh, it was at, uh, all-Star Weekend, my rookie year, and it was at his Jordan Grand Party. Yeah. And it's like you said, like, <laughs> you, can't, you can't describe that. You can't describe that feeling you get. It's, <laughs> it's, it's one of those, that's him. Yes. And he don't even play no more. Like, you, you're like, that's him. Like, yes. That, that's the guy. Yes. Uh, so... I mean, it's like you said, it was like me, meeting Black Jesus or something <laughs> like that, That's him right there. It's almost scary um, when you go on the road to see the reaction that people give Michael. I mean, uh, the kids that come to the hotel to, to try to catch Michael getting on the bus. Ooh, woo. look at that taxi. Now that had to be 1923. He's really not from this planet. <laughs> <laughs> look at that taxi. <laughs> He's got to get on the bus. And the look of disappointment on their face when they, they don't get his autograph. Uh, the, the response. I mean, there was a great picture from the Portland paper. Michael walking onto the floor with our team. And there's a single file line. And you see in the background all these kids standing, taking pictures and, like, reaching out to touch him. It's like uh, I compare it to biblically about people reaching out trying to touch, touch Christ's garment. It's like they just want to touch him. And now the last legend we have is Magic Johnson. Magic recognizes Jordan's influence not only on the court, but also in shaping the global popularity of basketball. Their Number one is Magic Johnson, one of the greatest guards to ever play basketball. He's praising Michael Jordan as a god on basketball court. These are all legends, man. Mutual respect is evident in various public statements and interactions. The story Magic shared about Michael Jordan showed his God-given ability to hang in the air and do moves that Magic didn't even think were possible. And Magic explained it in a hilarious way. I don't usually talk trash, but I had to that time. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, Michael, if you don't turn into Air Jordan, we gonna blow y'all out. <laughs> man. He started sweating. <laughs> it was hard. That tongue went long. <laughs> <laughs> you know when that tongue comes out. It's over. It's a problem. He about, he about to do something. <laughs> Boy, that dude came out that timeout. He scored about four straight threes. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And I went, oh, man. Then he came down. I got to show you this one. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. So, I won't hurt myself. Okay. <laughs> so he stole the basketball. He coming down the right side. He takes off. David Robinson coming this way. So Mike just cuffed. 
And he just looked at it. In the air. And he kept looking. He kept looking. He kept looking. <laughs> he went all the way down, Jack. He did a 360. Ooh. Bam! And I said, that's it. It's that's the, it. It's that, over. That's him. It's over. And uh, that was the 92 dream team he done that against. Nothing but superstars on that team. It was the dream team. This man turned into a beast because Magic said something. That was a practice, uh, a practice tape that uh, you barely can find that tape for some reason. I can't find that whole exact, the whole practice, but that was a hell of a practice. They said they said that was a hell of a practice. If you can ever get your hands on it, watch it. Larry Bird not sitting down, so he come in with his cigar. Got his drink. <laughs> so how old is he right now? He's 26, 27? Yeah, yeah, young, Young you know. boy, yeah. yeah. So, I just want y'all to know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And tell me, what is your favorite Jordan story?